It gives you that confidence to know that, that God is speaking to us. And you know, this morning, my worst fear, my worst nightmare is that, that one day I'll stand behind one of these pulpits and, and that some thought of my mind or some idea of my heart would come into God's word. That, that, really, that really fears me. Because the last thing I want is to tell anyone what I think what my opinion is or what I believe because no one cares and neither you should it only matters what it says in the word of God and you know we've had a couple of missions lately and we've been to the retreat and, and whatever and a few Sundays ago I was meant to preach I think it, it was at maybe one of the missions or something I don't know but there were a load of brothers came up thank God to do help us do the mission and we just let them preach and so I had this word put together but I never preached it. And then a couple of Sundays ago, I was meant to preach it, and I never preached it again. And I would, so I would, I've had this sitting for a while, which is unusual. I usually don't do things that way. But as I came here this morning, and Alistair was, was late in the meeting, it, it gave me confirmation, and a few things has been prayed for and said that this was the word for this morning. This is what our Lord wants to say to us. I do believe that with all my heart. And, and what I want to speak about this morning is I, I rarely put like names or messages or anything like that, but if I could put a name in this one, it's be strong and courageous. That's, that's, because that's sort of the theme of the message. And you know, this morning, for us who truly are born again believers, for the saints who gather here this morning, we don't buy into something that Alistair spoke about this morning. We don't buy into the idea that, oh, we go and get saved, we become Christians, and then everything just becomes perfect. We never have another trouble or another care. We just walk about happy and over the moon and smile and all the time, and we're always full of joy. And, you know, I joke about it sometimes, but genuinely, that's not Christianity. And I always say it might be drugs might be something we're on, but it has nothing to do with Christianity. Christians' hearts break. Is there a Christian in here this morning that's never had a broken heart? And if you don't have one, there's one coming. Christians have worries and cares and problems. Christians have illnesses and sicknesses, mentally, physically. All these things we have. But the thing that differentiates me and you from the world out there is when that happens to you in the world you're on your own kettle you're on your own ticket get through it use drugs use psychiatrists use drink use what you like get through it but we have jesus christ Amen. we have the most powerful force in the universe the king of kings and the lord of lords and he's on our side Amen. and he's with us every single day and we have to understand that this morning it's not about Troubles and problems and cares. It's about who's going to get us through them troubles and problems and cares this morning. I was in a place called Bluss once and I was walking through a wee gift shop and I saw, of all things, an ashtray. It wasn't a biblical thing. But it said on this wee ashtray thing, it said, You can't st stop the storm. You've just to learn to dance in the rain. I like that. I like that. So this morning, we go through many situations, problems, storms, and cares, but we go through them with Jesus Christ. And the piece of scripture that I would like to come from this morning is about a man who found himself all of a sudden in a place he never expected to be, facing a world of troubles he never expected to face. But it also tells us about a good God that got him through it. So go with me, please, in your Bible to the book of Joshua. Chapter 1, and we'll read some verse 1, down to about 9, I think, so. Book of Joshua, just hallelujah, amen, or something when you find it. No rush this morning. Right at the back of your Bible, just after Deuteronomy. Uh, Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 1, right at the beginning. Are we there? Amen. Amen, thank God. 
Oh, sorry, is there anyone wants a Bible this morning? If, if you raise your hands, one of the brothers will bring you a Bible. If you don't have one, you hope your sister here, please. Someone give the sister a Bible. Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 1. Is there anyone else that needs a Bible this morning? Sister over here, please. Are we good? So the Bible reads, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, arise, go over the Jordan, you and all the, this people, to the land which I am giving you, to them, the children of Israel. Sorry, to Lord, the land I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, I said to Moses. From the wilderness of the Libyans, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As it was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you, thank God Jesus. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall be divided an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commands you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thank the Lord Jesus. Could I ask the church that before we, we preach this morning, that we pray, we seek the face of the Lord this morning. Ask that the Lord would speak to your heart, that his word would be made alive to you this morning, and that in doing so, we could live a life according to what God's telling us to do. Please, I beg you, pray for me this morning. Don't pray for the word of God, because that's perfect. But would you pray, brothers and sisters, that the Lord would use me this morning, use this vessel, that God's word can be preached. Blessed and merciful Lord, wonderful Jesus, thank you, my God. Thank you for the assembly of your saints and the reading of your word this morning, my God. We have already been blessed this morning far beyond what we deserve, my God. And we thank you for that. But we ask this morning, my God, that... Please, my God, use your word to help us in our lives this morning, my God. Use your word this morning, my God, that, that we can be blessed this morning, my God. Please, my God, we don't pray for your word because it's perfect, but please, I am not, my God. I am a servant. I have many flaws this morning, my God. I have many weaknesses, Lord Jesus. Please, help me to preach your word this morning, my God. Let there be nothing of me here, my God, nothing of my mind, but everything of you this morning, my God. Help us as we... As we seek your face this morning, my God, and your, your guidance for our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we go to verse 1 and it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over the Jordan, and you and all this people to the land in which I am giving you. To them, the children of Israel. We'll go back a wee bit. As we know, uh, Moses led the, Israel, the Israelites out of captivity in, in Egypt. For 40 years they were in the desert. They followed after Moses. The, many things happened there. As we know, we we'll go back through the Bible, you know, the big events like the opening of the Red Sea, many things that God had done to get them so far. And now in all this time, Joshua was with Moses. And the Bible says here it was Moses' servant. In some translations, I think in the old King James, it says he was a minister to Moses. But the word minister simply means servant. That's what it means. So this man, Joshua, would have attended to the needs of Moses. As Moses went about his daily tasks, doing what he did, 
This man would have attended to his needs. He was Moses' assistant. He was there with him. But that's what he was. He was an assistant, a helper, whatever you want to call him. Moses was the man who led them out. Moses was their minister. Moses was the prophet. Now, at the end, sort of the last verses in Deuteronomy, we see Moses dying. But what it says is this. It says, Moses' eyes never grew dim or his body never grew weak. He went up in the mountain. God showed Moses the promised land. He showed him everything that he had promised. And he said, but you'll never enter into it. Moses never entered into the promised land. He died there in the mountain. But the Bible says his eyes never grew dim and he wasn't weak. And so what that tells us is Moses wasn't expected to die. It didn't look like he was going to die. Even though he was 120 years old, he was still fit. He was still strong. He was strong enough to climb a big mountain. And so it wasn't an expected death. It wasn't like Moses had become feeble and ill and... Joshua was there on the sidelines just waiting for him to die. It wasn't like that. Moses was still very much active. And then all of a sudden, God took him. He never entered into the promised land. So this man, Joshua, who was Moses' assistant, all of a sudden, everything is on him. He goes from being an assistant to all the responsibility being on him. Now, the responsibility was this. I think it's somewhere in Deuteronomy. I hope I've never got that wrong. But it says that there was 500,000 men between the ages of 20 and 50. Fighting men. So then you've got all the men under the age of 20, teenagers and children, and all the men over the age of 50. And then all the women, children and animals and everything else. So if you calculate all that, there's probably a few million people standing at the mouth of the Jordan River, waiting to cross at this point. So you've got maybe two or three million or more, I don't know, standing, waiting to cross this raging river, and all of a sudden there's this assistant standing looking at all these people, looking at this river. Moses is gone, the one that they all looked to, the one that, and he's thinking, can you imagine what he's thinking? And by the way, by this point, Joshua was eating. He's an old man. Even by this day's standards, he's still a fair age of a man. So you imagine this man of 80 standing at the Jordan River, waiting to cross with maybe three or four million people in tow and all the animals and everything else, and there's a raging river. Can you imagine what's going through his mind? How am I getting over here? How am I getting across this river? After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, and say, uh, the assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over the Jordan, and I, and I will, as people, to the land in which I am giving to them, the children of earth. So Joshua was facing a huge problem, wasn't he? All these people thrust something upon him that he never expected, and there he is at the mouth of this river. But, but what we read there is what I was speaking about this morning. God commanded him. God was with him. God said it would happen. And that was Joshua's, to coin a phrase, ace in the hole. It would have been impossible. All these millions of people, a raging river, an old man, trying to get them at the other side. But God was with them. And it was God that was going to get them to the other side and not Joshua. This morning for me and you, church, every person in this building this morning will have their own Jordan to cross. Every one of you will have your own set of problems this morning. There'll be things going on in your life this morning that only you know about. And as you look at that problem, you're going to see the same raging river that Joshua saw. You're going to see the same mountain, the same impossible thing to get over. As you stand this morning and you think, how am I going to get through this one? And you know, the thing about problems is this. Most of the things we ever worry about never happen. They never come to pass. The thing it gets us in, in the long run is the thing we never expected. 
Has any of you been there this morning? Have you ever been faced with something where you think, where did this come from? I never expected this. This wasn't supposed to happen. Because that's the way it was with Joshua. It was all thrust upon him. And sometimes it's like that for me and you. These problems come out of nowhere. They seem impossible. They seem that you just can't be dealt with. Just like Joshua had this. We can be standing at the mouth of the river and you say, Oh Lord, Lord, how do I get over this one? Alistair said it this morning. This problem I've came to. Maybe it's an illness this morning. Maybe it's a broken heart. You know, maybe you've lost someone this morning and your heart's broken and you're thinking, but how do I move past this? How do I get to the other side of this? I don't know how to do it. It might be financial or, you know. But you have to remember what God said to, to Joshua. He said, I, am going to, I have gave them the land. I am going to get them over. You know, if you are in Christ this morning, he's going to get you over the problem. The thing that you have to remember this morning is, you don't have to get over it. You've just to be there and let God do what he wants to do. You've got to trust in him this morning. It might seem impossible to you here in this place this morning because how do I get over missing that person? How does my heart heal? You know, for those whose heart is broken this morning, and at that time when you're on your own and you think, it's fine when people are around, but how do I get over this one? You know, we talked this morning about illness, depression, Autism, something that's close to my heart. And I know that problem this morning. I've been there to where you think. I've been through a lot in my life. I've dealt with a lot in my life. I've, I've came through financial and illness and all these things. But how do I deal with this one? This is the one. I just don't know what to do. This is my journey. Remember this this morning. You don't face it alone. God is with you. If he has said he's with you, he is with you. Jesus is with you this morning. He is going to get us across. But we have to trust in him. Verse 3 says, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, said Moses. From the wilderness... Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, Moses said. From the wilderness and this Labion, as far as the great river, as the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. You know, this morning, God has given us the victory. You know... When it speaks here, it says everywhere, it speaks about all these lands and all these places that God had given to the Israelites. And there's an important word there. He said, I have given them. Not will give, have given. And so that tells us it's in the past tense. It's there. He says, everywhere the sole of your feet goes, I have given you. But look what it says. It says, everywhere the sole of your feet go, everywhere you walk, I have given you. So God had already given them the land. God was going to get them across the Jordan. God said, but God said, everywhere that you walk, basically, I have given you. The victory was theirs. The land was theirs. But they had to walk to that place. You know what I'm saying this morning? They had to get there. The Lord said, everywhere the sole of your feet goes is yours. I've given it to you. Now claim it. It's yours. You know, for us this morning, we have the victory. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. Jesus has won. He has won the fight. The jig is up for Satan. It's all been done. When he hung his head on the cross and said it's finished, that's exactly what he meant. It is finished. We have the victory. We are victorious. But there's something we must do. We must walk in it. We must walk in it this morning. We can't just sit on our hands and say, God's gave me the victory. God's going to get me through it. 
That's it. No, we have a part to play this morning. Not, I don't speak, mean this morning working for salvation or anything like that. I mean there is things that we have to do. We have to be a good testimony this morning. We have to do that. We can't just say this morning, you know, I'm saved. God saved me. I'm going to heaven. And there's nothing now I have to do. I can just go and live as I like and do as I please and carry on as I please. And that's, it. that's not what God said. He said, everywhere the sole of your feet goes. So we have a part to play this morning. Listen, we're saved, we're going to heaven. Thank God for that. But we don't do what we do for God now because of what he's going to do. We do what we do now because of what he's done. It's already been done. He already gave them the land, but now they had to go to it. You know, the land wasn't just going to come to the Israelites. They had to walk all round Lebanon and all around this place and round the Euphrates River and go to every bit that God had given them. And you know every victory that God has given us this morning, we have to walk in that victory. We have to walk in it this morning. We can't just lie down and die. You know, we have good problems and situations this morning and the temptation, I know for me most of the time, is just to lie down and hop my head and say, I've had enough. I can't do any more. I just want to go to my bed, lie down, and let, just let it go. There's a temptation to do that this morning. You know, when everything in the world is coming against you, when it becomes a difficulty even to get to this building, you know, people are facing illnesses this morning, and I know that. You're facing heartbreak, depression, troubles in your life. And there's a temptation to say, I can't do it. God's given the victory, so I'm going to stop here. No, we have to keep going. We have to keep going this morning. We have to walk in the victories that God has given us. We have to get up this morning and say, I'm going to go again. I'm going to go again because I can do that in the power of Christ. Yes, I will get through another day because Christ is with me. For the sisters this morning, I'll get up, I'll do my hair, I'll put my makeup on and I'll go. Even though I don't feel like doing it, I'll do it. Because God is with me. And if God is for you, who can be against you? But we can't just sit in our hands this morning. You know, we can't sit here in this church, me and Alistair, Scony and Richard and William and young William and all the boys, Peter and everybody who goes with us and pray them in. God will just bring them in. They'll be okay. No, we have to go to our families and tell them that Jesus loves them. Jesus said, go, spread the gospel. We can't sit here and think, I'll just pray them in. We can't lie in our bed depressed in the morning and think, God will get me up, God will get me through it. No, we have to get up, stand on our two feet, put our clothes on and say, I'm going to go again because God is with me. That's how we can do it. If we lie down, if we say, no more church, no more reading the Bible, no more fellowship, and I can't do it, my heart's just too sore, we'll die. We'll die. We don't have to stop this morning because God is with us. But we have to walk. Brothers and sisters, we have to keep going this morning. Verse 5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Thank God, Jesus. You know, verse 5 says this, as Joshua crossed the Jordan, that wasn't the end of the problem. You know, as you read on through the Bible, Joshua faced many, many more battles after that. He did what God tell, told him to do. He got across the Jordan River. God got him across. But then there was many, many, many more battles came after that. They faced many, many things, the Israelites. There's a whole Old Testament story about how their lives went. That wasn't that one battle, it's won and now it's over. There were many, many, many more. But look what God said. He said, no man, Joshua, will be able to stand against you. They'll come against you, but they won't stand against you. Because he said, I am with you and I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. You know as you're on this Christian journey, let's call it that, as you walk on with Christ, and you get over one battle, the big massive one, maybe the broken heart, the grief, 
the mental struggle, the physical struggle, the financial struggle, whatever it is, you get over that one. But then there's all that ones in front of you again. And on top of that, people are going to come against you. They're going to come against you. You're going to be condemned and you're going to be persecuted for being a Christian. I'm going to tell you something this morning, and I know you know this better than me because I'm not trying to be clever this morning. A flat tyre or £500 less in the bank than you should have isn't persecution. That's not persecution. That's just daily life. Persecution is when people used by Satan come against you and try to stop your walk with God. Try to hold you back for doing the things of Christ. Persecution is when you're trying, someone's trying to stop you for doing what God wants you to do. Jesus said this, he said, if they hated me, they'll hate you. You know this morning, if you're in this building and you think, I became a Christian now, which means I'll live a better life and be a better pe person, so people will love me. That's not the gospel and that's not true. Jesus said, if they hated me, they'll hate you. You just became the world's number one enemy. You know, when you gave your life to Christ, you became public enemy number one. You stand for everything that Satan hates. You stand against it. Everything that Satan loves, you stand against it. You know this world and the state it's in, Alistair touched on it this morning, and I, I don't know enough about it, but gender issues and all these things, there'll be children, I don't want to get into it. Everything that was once wrong is now right, and everything that was once right is now wrong. And everything we stand for, this world hates. Because we stand for the truth. We stand for what is right. And if you do that, people will come against you. You'll be called this and that. You'll be called a bigot and a, and a holy Jew and a mental case and all these things. Your family will come against you. Your children will come against you. Your mother, your father. People are going to come against you. But look what he said. Look what the most powerful force in the universe said. He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. No man can come against you because I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. You know when you're going to fall? See when you forget that this morning. You know when we forget that this morning, when we forget who we serve, when we take our eyes off Jesus and put it on this world, then they'll have the victory. But if we keep our eyes on Christ this morning, keep our eyes on Jesus, what did he say? I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Who can come against you if God is for you? What are they going to do this morning? Okay, they call you a name, but God is for you. They call your children names, but God is for you. They come against your family, but God is for you. They try and maybe accuse you and blame you this morning but God is for you you know if I was in a cell in a jail somewhere this morning and I was being punished every day to where my life was in peril God is for me if they take my life then I go home to be with him if they take it all away I'd be with him forevermore to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord what can they do what are they going to do this morning we have the victory. He's with us. The trials and battles are coming. But God is with us. Jesus is with us. And we have to push on. We have to keep going. The Jordan isn't the last one. There'll be another one. They're coming and coming and coming and coming. But Christ is with us. God is with us. What are you doing? I won't keep you much longer. Verse 6 is, Be strong and, good, uh, and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance that the land which I swore to their fathers. To, to I swore to their fathers to give. And only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses' the servant commands you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. I believe this, and I'll never believe anything differently. We are saved to serve. That's it. We are saved to serve. We are part of 
a massive recycling unit, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. We're lost. We're separated from God by our sin. We're on our way to destruction. And then Christ comes into our lives and saves us. By his precious blood we are saved. He sets us on the path. He, start, he justifies us and then he starts to sanctify us, clean us up, fancy ones. But basically, he's cleaning us up. He's cleaning our life up. And as we go on that journey and we get closer to God, then he wants to use us that the same can happen to others. And so we're part of a recycling unit. We've got a job to do and that job is to see souls saved. That's our job. We're going to heaven, job done, thank the Lord Jesus. But we've got a job to do and that is to see souls saved. Look what he says to Joshua. He says, all the inheritance, all this land, he said, I have given you. He says, but how are you going to do it? He says, how are you going to do what I've, what I've told you to do? Now, I've told you this morning, we need to be brave. We need to be courageous. We need to keep going. We need to get up, girls, and get our makeup on and get going. Men, get out to work, do the job, get home, get to church, do what we have to do. I've said all that things this morning, but how do we do it? How is it done? The word of God. That's how you do it. There's the manual. That's the instruction book. We have it in front of us. And you know what we don't do? We don't turn from it. We don't look at that world and say, oh, well, maybe, look, we can just compromise a wee bit just for the sake of being liked because I'm tired of being persecuted and I'm tired of being called names and I'm tired of being called a bigot. And this. So what we'll do is we'll do what the world has started to do. We'll take the holy scriptures of God and we'll turn them to suit ourselves. We'll misinterpret it and we'll do this and we'll do that so that we can marry men to each other and so that we can live as we please and do as we please. But that's not what God told Joshua. He said, don't turn to the right and left. Don't defer from the Holy Scripture. Stick to the Word of God. And you know if we stick to the Word of God this morning, if we go to our Holy Scriptures this morning, God will get us through it. Because we have the instruction. Because we have a job to do. You see, Joshua... You get my specs. Oh God, it's no fun being when you're old. No fun at all. Young ones are laughing. They don't even know what I mean. You'll know one day. You live long enough. So, Joshua had a job to do, didn't he? All these land, all inheritance that the people had. Joshua was to lead them. Joshua was the man, even though he was 80 year old. We have a job to do this morning. But Lord, I'm tired. Lord, my heart's broken. Lord, I've been through so much. I just, I want to stop now. But God says, be strong and courageous. Keep going. Because we have a job to do. And that job is to see other souls saved. You see, it's not about us anymore. It's about Him. Everything is about Him. It's all about Him being glorified. It's all about God. Because you know one day, I am going to use myself here. I will stand in glory. Nancy's going to laugh when I say this, but I'm saying it anyway. A dirty wee rat <laughs> will stand in glory. Think of that. This, me, I deserve to die and go to hell. And you believe me, I do. But one day I will stand in glory. The king of the universe will say, there he is. And he's here because I am God. He is here because of what I can take sinful black clay and do. Take him to glory. I'll be there because he took me. Not because I got there in my own strength and merit, but because he... And in that, he is glorified. But we have to keep going. We have to be courageous and strong. Another verse, we're going to stop. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, it says in verse 8, but you shall observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Close the Bible. Okay. The last verse, verse 9, and we'll finish that, set, doesn't say, I've asked you. That's not what it says. It doesn't say I've advised you. That's not what it says. Can I ask by a show of hands this morning, as Christians, should we be in the will of God? Who agrees with that this morning? As born-again believers, should we be in God's will? Should they? 
God never said, here's some advice for you, but I said, be strong and courageous. He said, have I not commanded you? That is a command from God. It's not a request. It's not an idea. It's a command. He is, in other words, I am your God, and you are my child, and I have commanded you, be strong and courageous, because I'm with you. I am with you. Now, I don't feel very strong and courageous most of the time. As a matter of fact, most of the time I'm a shiver and quiver and wreck. That's what I'm sitting here this morning waiting to come and preach this word. I wish God would have just took me home. I was so nervous. But thank the Lord Jesus, I don't depend on me. I depend on him. Because he is with me. And because he is with me, I can stand here this morning. And you know because he's with you, brother and sister, child of God this morning, you will get over the heartbreak. You know because he's with you this morning, that problem, you will get past it. You know that fear, that worry, that thing that's in your heart this morning, and you think there's no end to this, you're going to get through it because he is with you. But you have to listen to something this morning. Jesus is Lord of all or he's none at all. Now I know it's just to be seen, but it's true. We can't have a saviour without having a Lord. We can't come in here this morning and think, Jesus is my saviour, he did everything for me, but he's not my Lord. Because I'll go away and I'll do as I like and I'll live as I please. That's not how it works this morning. We live in the will of God. And we will get it wrong and we will fall, but we are in God's will this morning. And he's given us a command. Just like he gave Joshua, be strong and courageous. In other words, keep going. When your strength feels, when everything feels and there's nothing left, turn to him and say, Lord Jesus, get me through another day. One more day, God. Davy sings a song, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Get me through this day. Get me through this one. And we'll see you tomorrow, brothers. Trust in God every single day. The Jordans, the Red Seas, all the problems will come. But we serve a real God this morning. We serve a God of creation this morning. And the Bible says he will not leave us and he will not forsake us. The unexpected problem, the thing that you've ended up in that you never thought was going to happen. I was just the assistant. I was going along, minding me in business and then, whoosh, everything's on me. But God is with you. God is with you this morning. Because you know what you are this morning. A child of the living God. A high priest, the Bible says. Adopted into God's family. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. All things. God is with us this morning. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed and merciful Lord, wonderful Jesus. Please, my God, as we face our Jordan this morning, my God, help us not to see the raging waters of the rivers, my God. Help us not to see the millions of problems, my God, but help us to see you, Jesus. Help us to see that you are with us this morning, that you will not leave us and you will not forsake us. Help us this morning to know, my God, that you're going to get us across the river and over the mountain and through the problems. Please, my God, allow us to look to you this morning. Give us the strength and faith, my God, to remain close to you. We love you and we thank you for all that you've done in this place this morning, my God. In Jesus' precious name.